Hi everyone, this is me, Marcy Lamberson. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, getting ready to have you learn about designing and making your own fish. So this tutorial is made for everyone, but primarily for the Beginning Lamp Work Fun Challenge group on Facebook which is a fun group. If you haven't joined, please feel free to join us. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Yep, me, me, me. Anyhow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna design our own fish this time. And I thought that I would give you some different components and what to, some basic outline. And then from there, you will design your own fish. So what I'm doing is I'm starting out with a couple of colors. I've got a base color, my periwinkle. I chose periwinkle because it's just so easy to work with. It's soft and pliant and a lot of colors look great against it. And then I wanted two transparents for the fins that go well together. And I have this uh, aqua transparent medium and then I also have Epitrace ink blue which is one of my all-time favorite transparent colors and I grabbed a black because we've got to do some eyeballs and also I have a touch of 420 coral I'm not sure which one it is if we want to do fun lips and in case I change my mind and want not as bright, I do have a little bit of pink also. And I'm not sure which one it is. It looks like I kind of combined a couple of them. Generally, I prefer the Creationist messy pinks for soft pinks on things because they don't always react the same way as the Epitray do. And I've got a little bit of white just in case I need that. So, okay, let's get going. First, I'm gonna make a base bead. And here's your first part of building your own fantasy fish or designing your own. And the shape of the base of the fish can be anything you'd like. I'm going to be working vertically, north, south, so that the hole goes up and down. When people choose to build their fish across this way with the mouth at one end and the tail at the other, the problem is that oftentimes people add very fancy top fins and it makes them flop over because the balance isn't right. If you choose to do this and you're going to be wearing it horizontally, be sure that the bottom half has a lot more weight than the top half. So that's why this is kind of easier for me. If you have the hole going up and down, it doesn't matter. So let's make a basic bead. I'm working on my Nortel Miner, although I have a lot of other torches and all of them are good. Carlisle's, all different kinds. Um, this is the one that I use an awful lot. It's just been a workhorse for me and I do enjoy it. I have a torch mounted marver and I'm working on a 332nd mandrel. You can work on any size mandrel you want. So I'm just making a basic shape. Now, if you wanted to start with a circle or an olive shape or a long shape like I tend to do, like you saw, I have those two other fish tutorials on here on YouTube that you can refer to also if you wanna use that shape. But you can also use a bead roller if you prefer and then mash it or a press if you have like a Zuzi's press or one of Ray Skeen's wonderful presses that makes a great shape. You can work with anything you want as a basic shape. You just need to have it large enough that you can build off of it. So I'm starting with a barrel and then deciding from there where I want to go. We're going to keep this on the smaller side just to make the um, tutorial a little bit faster. This is a Cote Marver, which is what I use instead of a graphite marver. It's got a really long surface here and it's metal and I like it. So I'm just heating up my bead and notice how I'm keeping my mandrel parallel to the table, which makes things work so much easier and I'm heating it up to give it a little marver. 
I'm watching the color and I'm also watching the shape and I see that it is rounded up and it's pretty even now. And then I'm letting it cool down a little bit. I'm holding it above the flame. See how the color's changing? And once it comes down to about this color, then it's great for marbling. It's better to marble it a little bit warmer, uh, a little bit cooler than too warm. If it's too warm, then it kind of mushes as soon as you touch down. Have you ever had that happen to you? So let it cool a little more if that's what happens normally. We're gonna make this a little bit fatter barrel and then we'll give it a good mush. I kind of like my fish longer than taller, although I've seen them pretty tall and a round fish would be a lot of fun also. I'm just adding a little more glass and then we're going to press it and get a basic fish shape. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to make some simple eyes. We're going to talk about decorating it. Once we get a basic shape down, then what I'm going to suggest is that you use uh, some of the techniques or one of the techniques that you have learned in other months here. And we have had a bunch of different techniques here uh, that you've learned that can apply to fish decoration. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, what is that going to be? But when you think about it, some of the most interesting beads are ones that are a combination of techniques that sometimes you expect and sometimes are unexpected. So, of course, you could do some frit, and that would be wonderful. I just pressed my barrel, and this is the shape I got, which is a fine shape. I don't need anything too fancy. That works just great for me. I'm letting it cool a sec before I take the chill marks out. So some of the some of the um, techniques that we've used, I, I wrote down a few. We've done dots. Remember the very first month that this group was open, and all of this can be found in the file section with links to the former tutorials, which are still tutorials up on YouTube. You guys are so lucky. You've got quite a library there. We've got. Uh, dots, stringer control, frit, hearts, striking colors, which could be cool if you're choosing striking colors for your fins, perhaps. We learned dichro with sparkles, uh, marini, all kinds of stuff. So just pick something that you like that you've done before or try something new that you didn't get a chance to try, and that's what you'll be using for decorating the body. Okay, so now we have a base here. First thing I'm going to do is figure out what I want to use for my decorations. And right now, I'm looking to see what do I have hanging around that I can use. I have some old twisties, and that could be fun. I can do dots, that would be fun, or I can do color. And I'm thinking I'm going to do something with color. I am going to layer color over this. So I'm taking my ink blue and I'm going to stripe it all the way around. And I'm just starting at one end and I start like here and this will be the tail area and I'm going to cover it up so if my start isn't so beautiful and end it's okay because I'm going to be covering it up afterwards. And I'm just going across the entire bead like this. See where I'm melting the glass? Right where it hits the bead, the fish bead, but the fish bead is staying cool. You saw that the color didn't change. Now I'm going to melt this in. So this is color layering like Val Cox did her month. And I'm going to melt this in gently. I am winging this as I go because I'm kind of inventing as I go. And I think that if this is the first time you've done something like this, you might want to kind of think about it first and have everything ready to go and think it through pretty well. I am heating just the ink blue here underneath the flame. You see the color change and pressing it down. I have more control when I'm melting things in that way. 
I can watch to see how far it's spreading, whether I need to push it a little bit with my brass tool, because remember, graphite smooths glass and brass moves glass. It's a good thing to remember. Okay, melting it in. So this is part of my decoration. Maybe we'll add a few dots over the top of it too. And I'm gonna use this coral for lips later on. So I will add those dots in a little bit. Let me just finish melting this in. Getting it all the way in there. And this will make it more cohesive, seeing that I chose this color for part of the fins and tail also. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more on for a face of the plain periwinkle. This will be the body. So I'm just gonna add a small gather to what will be the front of it. And it doesn't matter which one. This side's a tiny bit flatter. This one goes out a tiny bit more. So the flatter side will be the side that I'll add the face to, but you don't need to flatten it first and you don't have to add a face. You can just work off of that shape if that's easier for you. So I'm just adding a little bit more for a head. I'm going back and forth like I did in my other tutorials to add that shape. And I'm heating so that it's blended all the way through no lines where we connected it and I'm watching the color so when it's super hot and I want it to be longer I'll hold it down and let the hot glass move down with gravity and once it started cooling a bit and I want it to stay up this way then I will um, hold it this angle and I think I want to add a little bit more I want a little bit bigger face on it but isn't that cool the way you can do that. Looks like an egg, kind of. We'll make it a little bit longer egg. The lips will extend this face too, but I want it enough that the eyeballs will fit in, and I like to make rather whimsical eyes when I'm doing a fantasy style fish. Okay, so we're letting it cool, and we've got a head on it now. We've got a little decoration, and now that we've got the head on, I can add more decoration to the side of the body. This would be fun with a twisty right here, or dichro across it, or even, oh, some silver to ivory. I'm just gonna add a few dots. You guys did dots before. I'm just gonna add a few dots along here. just added three. We'll do three on the other side. This is pretty simple, isn't it? So then I'm going to mark where I want to make the face and I want to do some eyes. So I'm going to indent with just a poking tool. I'm going to just make some indentations. They're great. You can always uh, heat them up and and move them later on, but this kind of gives you a place to work from. And I've got black here and I, I have, oh, I have a smaller piece. Here we go. We're going to just pull out a little more stringer out of here and I'm going to show you a couple things. We're going to make simple eyes, although you could make some fancy ones, some white dots with some black on top of it. I'm going to keep it simple this time though. And I'm just pulling a little emergency stringer out. I heated my mandrel and I heated the glass, letting it cool a little bit. Then I'm going to flame cut it off. And I'm making sure that where I'm putting the glass and pulling emergency stringer, isn't anywhere that will get in the way of future glass. So if I'm doing fins and tails, none of it's going to be right around there. So let's add a dot for the eye right where I left that mark. Just keeping it simple. 
want to give you some basic techniques and you guys know me I like cheeks on things I'm using the same color of the base and I'm just going to add some dots below the eyes I'm not melting in the eyes I'm leaving them slightly raised and I'm just adding a little glass below it and I'm heating up the glass and where it's going from underneath the flame and I'm holding it straight up so it sinks back in doing it one more time careful not to melt the eye in keeping the back of the fish warm while that's sinking in okay now it's got a little bit of a cheek on that side you're gonna do the same on this side you heat up a little bit where your cheek is gonna go and then I heat it up again just a little bit careful not to get the eye in the rest of the fish and let it sink in there we go got some fish cheeks because we know some of them have fat cheeks a lot of them don't but what the heck okay so let's do a tail and some fins while the front of the face is cooling so for the tail let's start off with because this is already ink blue i'm going to add just a dot of ink blue to work off of That kind of gives me a starting point because so I'm going to do a top fin and some side fins on this and the tail's going to be big. So I've got a place to start and I want to use two transparent colors in it. And I like two transparent colors that look nice together because when I press them and mash them, they're going to blend a little bit where they connect. So I'm just going over rainbow style. See how it kind of looks like a rainbow as you go over it to start a base. I'm gonna make it a little larger. Now, if you wanna get fancy, you can do layers of it or you can just do two colors. So you could do this, have your aqua and then put some ink blue on it. If you want, you can do more ink blue and more aqua, which would make it very fancy. Or you can just do aqua, then ink blue, but I'm hoping you're gonna choose some different colors. And that's one of the ways that you can make this fish unique to you. And you guys can probably tell by my type of beads that unique is very important to me. That's kind of a way of showing who you are and uh, kind of showing other people who you are also through your color choice, through the techniques that you choose, and through the designs that you make. Okay, so I'm going out on the sides now a little bit. We're gonna make it a little wider. See how I just added a little bit to widen out that tail? Let's go a little further, a little bit more. What the heck, it's gonna be a crazy tail. Okay, so we've got that. We're gonna do a top fin and some side fins also. Because that mantle's there, it's gonna be kind of a smallish top fin. So we've got some, oh, I put a little bit of ink blue there. We're going to add a little aqua, and you can see I accidentally touched the mandrel. So let's fix that real fast. First, I try heat below it to see whether it will pull it away, which it looks like it might be doing. And I'm holding it this way away from the mandrel to see whether it will disconnect. But meanwhile, I'm going to keep the rest warm. And I see that, I don't know whether you can see it, there's just a tiny bit that touches. So what I do, and you can do too, take a pair of sharp scissors. If you have little scissors that might fit in the place easier. First, I'm gonna go back and warm up my beak. Because as you start doing this, you end up focusing on one area and you forget about the rest. Okay, so it still touches in one little place. I'm gonna heat the glass and just give it a sniff. And now it's not attached anymore. Yay. Let's hear it for shears. And you can use like kitchen shears or small little sharp like nail scissors. As long as your glass is hot enough and your blades are strongish, you'll do just fine. Okay, let's add a little more glass here. 
and we're gonna go up with that just because it's fun. Keep the rest of the bead warm. And we'll add a little bit more ink blue because boy, do I love ink blue. Okay, and we're gonna do some big side ones also. So we're gonna connect. We'll do a little bit of ink blue lines. And you notice that we haven't smushed these yet or done anything with them, they're just there. The thinner you make them once you mash them and turn them into fins, the easier they are to crack. So I often wait till towards the end to do it. I'm gonna make some good size ones. We're gonna start with our base down here of ink blue. And see how I kind of went on an angle? I'm hoping that you can see that there. I went down and I deposited a little extra on the bottom. We're gonna see whether we can do something similar on this side. And I went right below the first dot and I went on an angle. And then I added a little extra on the bottom to start off the fin. And while that's cooling, I'm heating other parts of my fish. Okay. So let's do a little bit of the aqua. I think this is the medium aqua, I'm not sure. Not that I've seen fish that look anything like that, but that's what's fun about making a fantasy fish. Oftentimes I use twisties on them. I think they're kind of fun. I'm just adding a little extra glass because we're gonna make big fins for this. And then you know me, here we go. Just a little bit more of the ink blue because I love ink blue. Oh, don't forget, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Feel free to find me on Instagram under Marcy Lamberson. I know, very unique. And follow me. And I'm also on Facebook as well under Marcy Lamberson or um, my business page is under Studio Marcy. Okay, so now I want the fins to be the star. We've got that. I can tell we're going to really want some good size fish lips on it to kind of even things out. But let's have a little bit of fun with uh, the fins first. Now I have different tools that I use, but all of them essentially squish the glass. These are concave convex pliers. You can find them in jewelry making websites. They run about 15 bucks. These make a really lovely ripple effect. So let's use these because they're very common and you'll see them in a lot of my tutorials. I'm just gently squishing the glass. And what happens is it makes a little bit of a ripple. I'm gonna show you in a sec. I'm just finishing squishing all of the glass. There we go, and adjusting it to where I want it. So give me just a sec and I'll show you how pretty that is. Can you see that? I don't have any white. Let's see. Let me heat her up. Can you see it underneath there, how pretty it is with the ink blue and the aqua transparent? It will be so pretty. Okay, so the next thing, before you squish the side fins, you gotta decide one thing. Is this display or is this wearing? So if it's display, you can really do anything you want or hanging from a window or whatever. But if you're gonna wear it, you're, when you squish the side fins, you're gonna to wanna to pull them back so that they lay against you properly or whoever the wearer is. So let me just show you. Let's pretend these are wearing ones. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it's harder than just leaving them sticking out like that. I'm heating the front and the back side while everything else is staying warm on the fish. And then I'm going to take my concave convex pliers and as I squish, I'm gonna pull it back a little bit so that it's not sticking straight out. Squish and pull back a little. And we're gonna squish and pull back again. Squish and pull back again. And I'm gonna pull down a little bit too so they're a little more visible. 
and while that's cooling a little bit, I'm going to heat everything else up. Okay, so those have come down, and we haven't done final tweaks on them. We're just kind of getting them basically in shape. We're going to do the same on the other. So with this concave convex, this is kind of the divot, and this is the rounded part. You're going to need to reverse them if you want this fin to be the same as this one. And it's kind of awkward, I'm warning you, when it's your non-dominant side. So I'm heating both sides upside down because it's easier for me to squish that way. And it's going to look awkward. That's the way it goes. And I'm pulling down and squishing as I go. Okay, so I got two down. I'm going to go back and add a little bit of heat where I've squished because the metal takes out some of the um, heat in the glass. Go back and heat the rest of my fish. We're getting closer. Got to do the tail. And these fins are pretty like this or we can pull them. So I'm going to pull them later so that you can see what that looks like too in case you want to do that. So for this tail, we kind of have it doing this. Kind of fun like this but I'm going to do some squishing also I'm going to start squishing in the center and then I'm going to go to each side and that one was getting cool so I went back and heated it so that's kind of pretty like that I like that maybe we won't do a lot of pulling but we'll do a little just so you can see how to do it when I pull fins what I do is I heat just the edge And then I grab it with the same colored glass and just gently pull, let it cool, and then flame cut. You see how you can get very graceful looking edges on it that way? We'll do the same after I heat up everything. See how that's kind of pretty? Okay, so let's do the other side the same way. The top edge down to the bottom. Careful not to melt in other things. You grab it and just kind of pull back and out. And that made it more delicate too. Okay, let's do the top one after we heat up the fish. I'm heating up the edge of it, not the entire fin. And just pulling gently up and out. And that's too much. You've got to think when you're making fancy fins, will it make them too fragile or not? And you want them wearable, because we're making this a wearable one. We don't want to have them too large. If you're hanging them or displaying them, then go ahead, have at it. Okay, heat up the fish, and then we're going to do the back tail fin. And I'm going to go from the side on this one, and I'm just going to grab a little bit and pull out. Just pull in the direction you want it to go. I want this one a little longer on this side too. So see how I'm just heating up the edge and I'm grabbing a little bit of that glass and gently pulling and then pause. Let it cool a little bit and then flame cut. And go back and warm up your fish. We're almost done. It gives you some really pretty fins that way. Okay, so now I want to do big lips in a color that's kind of bright and a little bit obnoxious because it's fun. There are a couple of ways if you want to do funny lips on them, but most of them start with a dot. That's the easiest way. So I'm going to put a big, big dot of this coral on it. And I should have started with a larger piece, but it was sitting right there, and I thought, oh boy, we'll use this. So if you don't get enough on your first try, you can always add on to your dot. And I'm holding it straight up and down for a while. If it sinks too much, then I'll turn it this way. And while that coral is cooling, because I don't need it super hot when I'm working with it, I'll hold it upside down and heat up the rest of my fish. Okay, so we have some basic lips there that are kind of cute, just like that. If you want to spread them out, you can take a pokey tool and just heat the center of it. 
and indent and make a little kind of kissy face going around in a circle. So they kind of go out like that. That's one thing. But I like to use my razor blade. Let me heat that back up and have them do what I need it to do. Got to sink out a little bit more. And while I'm waiting for that to cool a tiny bit, I'm going to go back, heat my fish all over. Because you don't want to lose it when you put this much work into it, right? Okay, so now I'm going to heat that glass up again, the coral. And I'm going to take my razor and just go side to side. And then I push up and down and that opens the lips up. See how it gives them cute fat lips? I think that's a lot of fun. And that coral now goes with the coral that's on the side too. So that kind of ties that together. And that my friends is my fantasy fish. I look forward to seeing yours. And don't forget, have lots of fun with it and be inventive with it because that's what matters. Don't forget, subscribe. Have a great day. This is Marcy Lamberson. Bye.